Rob Hainso is the lead mechanics designer at Wizards of the Coast for Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition. And he's agreed, under great duress, to come on to Gamer Radio Zero here and talk about the Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition Player's Handbook. Yeah. Rob, thanks for coming on the show. All right, so let's talk real quick about the Player's Handbook. Sure. We, uh, we, we did interviews about the Dungeon Master's Guide, the uh, Monster Manual, and so tell did us... Did you uh, interview Mike? Uh, yep. Merles for Monster Manual. Mike for Monster Manual. And uh, James for DMG. And James for DMG. Okay. So now right. we got you for Player's Handbook. So um, they did a really good job. So oh, I'm yeah. not putting you on the spot. But okay. you know, I don't know if you can meet right. up to their expectations, but I'm hoping you can try. All they right. gave lots of spoilers and information. It was really good. So I, I want you to. Man, you know, those guys, you give them a blog, you give them a <laughs> podcast. It's like Spoiler City. Yeah, right. Jeez. These kids. <laughs> All right. No, I, I'm really not so much in the spoilers, but we'll see what I can do for you. All right. So, okay. Player's Handbook, tell us just briefly what it's about. Uh, sure. Kind of... uh, player's Handbook is really, really based on the character classes. Uh, the truth is it has the rules, but the rules for actually playing the game don't come until the ninth chapter. Uh, the first chapters are, you know, the usual, hey, if you've never played a role-playing game, here's what it is. Then uh, how to make a character. Uh, but the real meat of the game, the real meat of this book is uh, chapter four, which has the powers and abilities and class features for all eight character classes. And that's really, that takes up a lot of space because the truth is that every single character class has really interesting abilities to choose from in each level. And they're organized so that every single time you gain a level when you're playing that character, you just turn the page, Look at the new four, five, or six powers that are listed there. Choose the one you like. So you aren't flipping to the back of the book to find the alphabetical order power. You've got everything you need for your fighter or your wizard right in front of you right there. So the, the powers come every level? Are they every other level? Uh, different they... types of powers come every level. Okay. And uh, at, as people were finding here, even first level characters in this system, they start off stronger than first level characters did um, in uh, 3.5. I use the example like this. In 3.5, character power starts down here, and it goes up. Right. Uh, in 4th four, edition, it starts up here, where characters have more options, they're more survivable, they're more interesting, and then it goes something like that. I mean, the right. truth is, is that at a certain point, because you're getting powers at every level, at a certain point in your character's development, you're not getting more powers, you're just getting new powers and swapping them in. And uh, that's important because as people were feeling here playing first level characters, first level characters are fun. You can keep playing them over and over and over again and you're not just going to get bored. Well, the truth is you're not going to be first level for long. You're getting something cool at second level too that's different. And uh, we know that you can't give people too many powers because it's just overload. So we just stop that. It's not like third, uh, 3.5 where the wizard, the cleric, they end up with a spell list that's this long. You know, in our case, we make new powers that do things like earlier ones that are more interesting, and that way characters can stay interesting and feel somewhat similar to what they were all the way through their career. So what are some of the most interesting powers that you've seen in the office that people haven't heard about that you think they'd really be excited about? Most interesting powers that have been in the office? Okay, <laughs> give me one second. Uh, <laughs> Because that you you are asking me to take down all the walls of secrecy yeah. that are my normal operating <laughs> procedure and like shut them down. I mean, even here we only show people first level characters. That's really okay. I gotta like take it all the way down. Okay, um, not to put you on the spot. The, there are one. The, the truth is, is that all the daily powers for all the characters have ways of really, really mattering. Um, the fighter does something entirely different with him where his, like if he misses with them, well they don't get expended. But when you get up to like characters that are like, uh, imagine like a warlord. Uh, when a warlord goes and uses, uses one of his daily powers, he's very likely to not only get a hit on the enemy and do some damage, he's also going to have an effect on the, uh, the rest of the encounter. He's going to help all of his allies, like every time they shift, maybe they got a bonus to defenses or something like that, so that it changes the way the rest of the encounter plays. Um, as far as the absolute coolest power that I've had the most fun using and surprising people with when playing, um, I'm always like really psyched when people use, it's the interactions of powers that are interesting. Um, it's when people 
when someone simultaneously needs to go ahead, they're a warlock, they're going to use a daily power that allows them to, they're going to like go ahead and curse an enemy who's not dead yet. They're going to use a daily power that simultaneously kills that enemy, lets them go ahead and like get a bonus for the rest of the encounter like flight. They get off their, their boon, so they teleport over here. Now they use the good thing that they gained from using that encounter power on that enemy as a minor action. And then they're, they look at the situation and everybody's looking at them and everybody's like, wow, that was incredible. You're the man. And the guy says, action point. Because action point in this game means take another action. Right. And at that stage, the warlock goes, you know, and everybody's like, oh my god. And then you go from a situation where the thing about this game is that in 3.5 sometimes there were very obvious math situations where, yeah, if you roll a crit, maybe you're living. But otherwise, good luck. Right. And in this game, there's a situation where one character can make a huge difference with like really interesting play and working out with other people. So uh, I'm not exactly answering your question by giving you a spoiler, and uh, but I'll say that's that's where I've had the most fun. No, it's that like, sounds really cool. Yeah. It's been good. All right, so the one thing that they don't want to miss if they buy the player's handbook, I mean, you need to buy it. It's like if you, <laughs> your DM has it, what's the one thing that you'll miss? Okay. Is there a chance to, to pimp this and say okay, this is what wait it needs to be? If there is a player for the new edition who is not buying the player's handbook, it's because they trust their game master. Look, I'm playing here, and it's like if I touch someone's die and pick it up and start using it, they're freaking out. I mean, I trust my... I'm I mean, not going to have players who are going to let me go ahead and say, oh, you know, I think at 8th level the power you need is this, because that fits my concept of your futility. Because gamers know, are so trusting, yeah, so they're, why they're, would they're they really, need the player's really handbook, right? The player's handbook, uh, they're going to want to know at every single level, uh, every other level when they get a feat, they're going to want to be able to choose the feats. Um, when they go ahead and want to retrain, because they can do that when they gain a level, they can swap things out. So as you get higher level powers, you may decide, you know, the power that I had down here, even though, I'm keep, even though I've still got it available, I want to trade. I want something else, because now this higher level power, it does what that one used to do, but just better. So I'll swap out. I think you need the player's handbook access to do that. And uh, the basic rules, you could go ahead and let the rest of the group tell you what to do, but probably you want to know. Right. Yeah, you do. So. All right, that sounds good. Well, we don't want to keep you from everything else. Uh, Rob Hanso, okay. uh, lead mechanics designer Yeah, that's right. for Wizards of the Coast on Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, it was very fun. Thanks a lot.